Yeah. Um, okay. My name is Sibylla Tringham, and I'm a lecturer and fieldwork coordinator of the MA Programme in Conservation of Wall Paintings here at the Courtauld. And I am Jane Spooner, and I am a senior lecturer and uh, head of wall painting MA programme. Uh, well, thank you for signing up to our virtual open day today. Uh, we've put this presentation together to tell you about the programme. And following the short presentation, our colleague uh, Takayuki Hara, who is there as well, uh, is, he's from Student Academic Services, and he will be talking about the administration and will have an opportunity to answer some questions. So if you would like to post any questions that you have in the Q&A, hopefully that's at the top of the screen there, uh, we'll be able to answer those after our short presentation. Okay. So we wanted to really start by highlighting our amazing global wall painting heritage. Wall paintings form a major part of the world's cultural heritage from Neolithic to contemporary times. We can find them in castles, in palaces, temples, churches, cathedrals, crypts and tombs, civic and public buildings, as well as domestic contexts. We find wall paintings in all sorts of different climates as well, from tropical climates, Central American jungles, for example, to deserts on the Silk Road, high up in the Himalayas, and of course in cities and small villages. And they also vary in scale and grandeur. There are incredibly grand schemes in public buildings to mod relatively modest domestic decorations. And then in materials, and notably those in Italy might be more familiar with, are based in lime plaster. But a large number of wall paintings all around the world are made in earthen plasters or stone, painted on stone as well. And there's also a huge number of materials that are used to create the paint layer. These might be mineral pigments excavated from the ground, dug up from the ground, or man-made pigments such as Egyptian blue. And some materials used to create that paint layer are made from organic materials, from plant matter. So there's a, and there's also glues and gums, egg can be used as well to help bind all these materials together. So there's a really vast array of different types of materials used to decorate buildings with paintings. So we wanted to look at a few examples here. This is a, a site in India, in Rajasthan called Bundi. And it's an incredible palace with lots of different wall painting schemes dating from the 16th century and later. And uh, here we have some the rock cut caves in Vardzia in Georgia. This is the church of the Dormition. There are, many paint, there are many schemes here along the Silk Road. Here we have the Mogal Grottoes at Dunhuang. And at St. John's Co-Cathedral in Malta, we have the subterranean crypt was decorated uh, with a very elaborate wall painting scheme. Some of the temples, uh, sorry, some of the tombs in Egypt are decorated and high up in the Himalayas. Many of the uh, Buddhist temples are also painted with wall paintings. England has a rich history of medieval wall paintings, such as those at St. Altos Church in Harden. And there are also grand Baroque schemes in the UK, but also internationally here, this is a scheme in Malta in Valletta. And of course, there's a really rich um, history of contemporary urban murals. Our current students are currently working in Italy at the moment at the Villa Imperiali in Pesaro. And we'll be talking a bit more about that later. And they've also been working uh, recently at Longthorpe Tower in the UK. Wall paintings are such an important art form as they are removable from their context and they provide tangible connections to our past, providing insights to our history, to our beliefs, at a very specific place and time. And while being incredibly durable, many of these paintings are hundreds of years old, they're also vulnerable to changes in buildings or its use or neglect or lack of maintenance, environmental changes, material deterioration, and even some misguided conservation treatments of the past. So our master's program 
here at the Courtauld provides the education and professional training to preserve our wall painting heritage. The aim is to provide the knowledge and methodology for addressing a wide range of wall paintings, whatever the technology or wherever they're from. And to do this effectively, we need to understand the problems and their causes. And this requires a rigorous ethical and scientific framework. So the masters is underpinned by the philosophy of minimal intervention and an interdisciplinary approach. The methodology emphasizes investigations and analysis of component materials and techniques and diagnosis and control of the causes of deterioration. And this helps us to then design a preventive, passive or remedial intervention as appropriate that respects the integrity and the significance of the object and of its context. Some graduates go on to work as practicing wall painting conservators and go on to lead major conservation projects all around the world. Uh, we have graduates who led the projects at the Painted Hall in Greenwich, also the Tomb of Tutankhamun in Egypt and in Ethiopia. Other graduates go on to have an impact in the conservation of wall paintings and other aspects of cultural heritage through roles at leading institutions, for example, at the Getty Conservation Institute or ICROM English Heritage. The course is designed to produce graduates who are prepared for a professional career in wall painting conservation, but it will also equip you with highly transferable skills for a wide range of employment opportunities, including conservation science or further academic study. Okay, so I'm going to talk a bit about the programme structure. Um, so the MA is three years long. And uh, in the first year, we set a foundation, a foundational understanding of conservation of wall paintings. And uh, that's broken down into several different components. So we have principles and theory one, we do number two in the second year, um, which explores uh, the ethical principles behind uh, the conservation field as specific to the conservation of wall paintings, but also connected fields like the, connect, the conservation of, of the built heritage as well. Um, and then we also explore the principles and theory behind uh, different types of conservation interventions as well. We look at materials and technology um, and in materials and technology, we look at how wall paintings are made. And we use different kinds of sources for that, including original historic treatises, uh, but we also look at scientific evidence as well. And uh, in the materials and technology module, students make uh, replicas of real wall paintings. And we've got some examples behind us. Um, and they do replicas of different kinds of wall paintings. As Sibylla mentioned, some are on lime plaster, some on earthen plaster, some are on stone. Uh, then we do a remedial uh, work, which is foundational training in um, conservation treatment and, and physical interventions with wall paintings. And these um, replicas come in very handy for that. Um, so we'll see in some slides in a minute how that, how that might work. And then we also train students in the documentation of wall paintings as well. So that effectively means um, qualifying and understanding um, the different types of uh, deterioration phenomena you might have on a wall painting and uh, finding a way of communicating that, uh, but also documenting that uh, both graphically, photographically, and through other methods. We also teach a foundation in art history as well, because of course, wall paintings are works of art. We need to, we need to understand the background behind them. And that will also help conservators understand the significance of wall paintings as well. And then finally, we have a period of field work in the first year, which takes place on the Longthorpe Tower site um, near Peterborough. In the second year, we build on, on the training in the first year, principles and theory again. Um, and we also talk about preventive conservation of wall paintings and their supporting structures. And preventative conservation is a really important part of the course because sometimes 
we don't necessarily have to intervene or carry out physical treatment on a wall painting. It might be that actual, actually environmental factors are affecting the condition of a wall painting. And so we need to understand how to recognize and also how to treat that. We learn about technical examination of wall paintings. And I'm going to talk about that more when we have the next few slides up and also professional practice and research preparation. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then Sibylla will talk about field work. And um, in the final year, the focus is much more on um, using all the skills that you've been learning about in the previous two years on, your, uh, on two field work sites. And uh, you also have your own individual dissertation or research project. So if we move on. So principles and theory one, we focus particularly on understanding things like international charters and foundational principles and ethical standards lying behind the conservation of wall paintings. Materials and techniques, here's some students making their replicas. And uh, so they would have had uh, a whole range of classes going through the different types of wall painting techniques um, on, a, on a global level. And then they put some of that into practice by making their replicas. And then the replicas come in very handy and they carry out treatments, treatment practice uh, on, the, on the replicas. And documentation, you can see some of that going on here and you can see for example a legend where the different types of condition uh, phenomena or deterioration phenomena have been identified and mapped and also the course uh, includes an array of site visits which support the materials and technology teaching but also principles and theory and also remedial treatment and uh, we do more intensive work on cleaning and consolidation of wall paintings in the second year. And also we uh, carry out training in understanding how to do treatment trials and tests and how to evaluate and diagnose treatment. Our technical examination focuses on both invasive and non-invasive analysis. So invasive analysis might mean taking some samples from a wall painting. And so you can see on the left, you can see some cross sections made from samples taken from a wall painting. Or we might undertake non-invasive analysis where we look, at, we would look very closely uh, using different types of instrumental techniques or using portable microscopes, as you can see on the right. Um, and we also learn this, these are different types of non-invasive analysis. So for example, multispectral multi imaging can help us understand uh, perhaps previous treatments and what kind of material they've left on the surface or understanding original materials and techniques using different types of non-invasive instrumental equipment. Preventive conservation of wall paintings. Well, wall paintings, unless they've been detached and are on display in um, a museum, wall paintings are necessarily part of a building structure. And uh, it's very important to understand the in situ nature and context of wall paintings. And uh, so uh, preventive conservation is, is all about understanding the environmental conditions, both outside the building and inside the building, and how that might affect the wall painting. Um, professional practice, project management and research. Well, after leaving the course, as Sibella mentioned, conservators trained by us go on to work in different areas of the conservation field. And uh, you will get insights from practicing professionals in this course. You'll also look at how um, project management structures fit within each other in different contexts. And you'll also be learning research skills to prepare you for your dissertation. And on the subject of the dissertation, Previous dissertations have covered things like original um, materials, technical studies. They've also looked at conservation treatments and different types of materials, and um, also looked at different methodologies for the documentation of wall paintings as well. Also, other dissertations can cover things like ethical approaches and international standards as well in different areas of the globe. So the fieldwork is where we can really draw all of our learnings from the classroom and the workroom uh, and put it into practice and apply the theory that we've been learning too. 
Uh, we currently have two fieldwork projects running. Uh, one is at Longthorpe Tower, which is a very important medieval tower in Peterborough uh, with, a, with 14th century paintings on the first floor of the tower here. Um, and they have some of the, they have some very old, uh, I, very important iconography, a mixture of biblical and moral morality scenes uh, with some very unusual iconography. So they're extremely important. And this is a collaboration that we have with English Heritage. This is an exploded view, if you like, uh, of the students working there because it's actually a very small space. Um, but the paintings were whitewashed until the 1940s. They were discovered under the whitewash and it, the whitewash was removed. And there have been various attempts to stabilize the plasters in the past, the paintings in the past. And so now our students are replacing some of these failed repairs. Um, and this is a really interesting site, particularly because we're sort of looking at, as well as learning all the practical skills, for conserving all the paintings and all the investigative skills that we need. Um, we're also thinking about the presentation and the value of a painting's conservation history. The students, as we said, are currently at the Villa Imperiali in Pesaro. And uh, this is a very new site and they've just uh, started working there. And this is where there, there, are, many diff there are several different painted schemes there. You can see here as well. And the students are looking at all of these schemes to prioritize them, to think about the whole conservation plan and think about where to focus our attention and our resources. So they're doing lots of looking, lots of uh, recording, investigating, and indeed some, some treatment trials as well. We also have, oh, sorry, lights <laughs> have gone on. We also have uh, at the Courtauld an extensive collection of conservation books and journals. Um, and we also have the National Survey of Historic Wall Paintings in the British Isles. And this is a really valuable resource of, uh, that is, um, of all surviving and recorded medieval wall paintings throughout the British Isles. Um, the material includes photographic records as well as conservation reports, um, and all sorts of interesting references. And it's a really, really valuable resource. It's currently in the process of being digitized. I will say also that uh, we're based here at Somerset House and teaching uh, takes place here, as well, especially the practical teaching, but we also have teaching at our other um, place at Vernon, at Vernon Square as well. So for applying, uh, we look for applicants with backgrounds in either the arts, the sciences, or humanities. Um, we don't ex expect any prior con experience in conservation, although some understanding of the nature of wall painting conservation is desirable. And we also look for a, to a demonstrated commitment to the profession. Good hand skills are an advantage, uh, and we are looking for applicants with proficiency in English and with normal color vision. Applicants who don't have a degree in science will need to complete and pass an online science course in the summer prior to beginning the MA. And this is to this can be delivered online by the Courtauld. We'll now hand over to Taka, who will talk about other administrative aspects. Hi there. Um, my name is Taka. Um, I I'm the admissions officer here at the Courtauld. Um, I normally work with postgraduate applications. Um, so if you've got any questions, um, and then if you write an email to me, so to PG admissions, um, I'm the normally uh, the person who answers the question, um, the email. Um, so I'm just going to go through um, quickly about um, entry requirements. Um, that's um, for UK students, um, and that students will normally have achieved a good 2-1 in humanities or science um, bachelor's degree, considered to be an overall average um, percent. Overseas qualifications, it's equivalent to a good 2-1 in a UK first degree. Um, 
It's an if it's an American degree, it's normally GPA three point five or above. Um, if you're getting a um, degree from other countries, then then if you're not quite sure how it works, um, please send us an email, and I'm more than happy to just go. Uh, scholarships and funding. Um, we've got something called um court order scholarships, and. These scholarships are entirely made of um, donations and the amount um, can uh, vary every year. Uh, but last year, um, more than half of enrolled students uh, for the um, MA Conservation of Wall Paintings, um, they have been awarded a scholarship. Uh, and then uh, varied, um, but on average, it was seven thousand um, pounds. If you are eligible, especially if you're a UK um, student, um, sorry, just I was going to say something different. Um, sorry, the students on this program are not eligible for a master's loan um, from the UK government, um, partly because it's um, the duration. Um, for three years, uh, the UK government uh, they don't cover uh, that particular duration. Um, if you are enrolled, um, if you experience some hardship, um, we've got something called hardship funds. Um, if you're eligible, you can apply for a hardship fund once you um, your enrollment is complete. Awards um, of up to £1,000 can be made from the hardship fund. Normally, financial support is in the um, £400 to £600 range. And this fund cannot be used for tuition fees payment, um, but can can be used um, for other hardships such as like rent um, or like living expenses. Um, if you are if you're in the EU, so EU student and you're not sure if you need a visa to study in the UK or what fee status you be in, uh, please contact us. Um, generally speaking. If you do not have a settled or pre-settled status in the UK, um, you would require a visa to study in the UK and will be paying international fees. Um, I'm just going to talk about um, accommodation. Um, accommodation um, application will be um, will open in late spring. Um, we gen generally um, have um, University of London um, accommodations for postgraduate students, uh, they're called intercollegiate halls. Um, they are mainly um, uh, located in central London and, they, and you share um, accommodations with other University of London students. Um, these accommodations are mainly for international students who have never studied in UK previously. Um, but if you are looking for somebody is eligible to apply. Um, so the next slide, please. Um, so at the moment, applications are not just um, yet open. Um, we are um, trying to open them sometime next week. Um, hopefully, um, so the beginning of next week, um, we can open applications. Um, but the deadline for the application is um, Thursday, the 4th of January, 2024. And the um, no offer will be made um, without having interviews um, for the MA um, Conservation of Wall Paintings. And interviews um, will be held online um, sometime in Feb, 2024. Um, and you can see the um, link. And um, on the slide at the moment, um, and you can click apply um, from that page, and that would actually um, take you to the um, application page where you will find application portal from sometime next week. Okay, I think that's from me. Thank you so much. Shall we see if there are any questions? Yeah. Um, so we've got, I've, I've answered a couple of questions regarding fees um, and the um, alumni discount and we've still got sort of two open questions, would you be able to answer them?
Um, yes, shall I answer? Um, so one question is, uh, as these pictures show students painting, do applicants need to be artists or have artistic experience with this master's? Um, the answer is no, you don't need to be a practicing artist or you don't need to have artistic experience to do the MA in conservation of wall paintings. We have students from a range of backgrounds. Um, at the moment, we have an archeologist, we have a chemist, uh, we have, we do have a fine artist. Um, so there are different uh, avenues of conservation you can pursue and um, we don't expect people to have done a, a, a final degree in order to do conservation of wall paintings. But you do need to have an appreciation of wall paintings. And uh, so that's, that's very important. And in fact, I would, I would expand and say, we appreciate having a, a cohort with a mix of backgrounds. Mm. And that brings, uh, so as we say, with a chemistry background, for example, humanities, arts, and that brings for a really dynamic cohort together because you're all learning together. It's very mm -hmm. much working as a wall painting conservator is about being part of a team. And we instigate this right at the very beginning of our programme and it's all the way through. So Taka, there's a question here. Um, in terms of entry requirements, does the court hold accept continuing education certifications? Um, it really depends. So uh, it depends on the level. Um, so if that um, qualification you have um, responds to the um, level, which is the bachelor's degree, um, we are happy to have a look at your applications. Um, so, yeah. So, um, this is quite sort of like specific. So it might be actually best to actually email me mm -hmm. um, to pgadmissions at courtauld.ac.uk so I can actually have a look. Um, if that's sort of, if that's okay as an answer. Okay, and then there's a question from Hannah asking roughly how much of the year would we spend in London versus field trips? Um, well, um, the field work uh, in the first year is around six weeks away from London. Um, in the second year, it can be between six to eight weeks away, possibly a couple of weeks more. Um, and then in the final year, it's, gosh, it's about a third of the period away, isn't it? It's two two periods of field work. So possibly one is about six weeks and another one might be six weeks or four weeks. Your time in the third year is roughly split 50-50 between field work and research. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we have a semester system here now. So we run September to December and then January through till June. Okay, there's a question in the chat as well. Um, I've got um, I've got this link uh, that I can actually oh. send to Hannah um, on our website. It's sort of cost of living, and um, it we you know the cost of living is sort of um, it varies um, for any individual. So, so this is just a guidance. So this is actually not set in stone, but um, it might be uh, starting Hannah to you sorry uh, that's that's it for me okay i don't know if we've got any more questions um anything else that we'd like to add um Working, you often work, find yourself working at height, so that can be, uh, mm. you'd want to make sure that that was something you were comfortable with, with doing. Um, yes, you receive some training in yes. your first year yeah, in really. putting up a scaffolding, which is quite exciting. And health and safety. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then the, the, the site visits in the first year, you get a, a, a good insight into 
wall paintings which are in um, the London and southeast of England range and, and they're very varied and they consolidate some of the learning that you do in your first year. Um, in the second year, some of the site visits uh, are, are um, activity based as well and uh, consolidate your learning on the different modules in that year. It's quite it's quite an unusual master's program and of course that it's three years long um, and we're currently running it every other year and we're with six students. But it's different also because it's full time teaching. Um, so we expect uh, well, we provide teaching uh, full time. So that's, you know, four to five days a week. Um, and that teaching is on site here, either at Somerset House or Vernon Square. Okay, just wondering if there's another, oh, there's a, another question in Q&A, is there? Oh, there we go. Oh. Okay, um, the question from uh, Sophia is, how transferable are the conservation skills learned to other media, e.g. E paintings or sculptures? Um, they, I think it, the course is very specific to wall paintings. Um, however, because wall paintings are in situ within buildings, um, you could, also use the transferable skills that you learn to work in the field of buildings conservation or conservation management as well. Um, a lot of students from the course have gone on to work in, in the area of conservation management. Um, in terms of paintings, if you mean easel paintings, uh, I don't think the skills you learn on the wall paintings course apply so much to easel paintings, but the Courtauld offers a specific training course, a specific masters in the conservation of easel paintings. Um, in terms of sculptures, um, if we're talking about the polychromy of sculptures, I think there are some transferable skills, but we don't teach the conservation of uh, sculptural works of art um, in, in any detail at all. And that's, that's not a focus of this course. We can keep this open for another another couple of minutes in case there's other, any other questions. Oh, there's a, a question about fees. Is that one for you, Taka? Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, published. Um, so we've got um, tuition fees um, published on our website, and that's um, per year, and that's um, annual tuition fees, and uh, not for the duration of the course. So 1,600, if that's, um, I can't actually remember exactly how much um, it is for next year, but um, um, it is actually for per annum and um, for um, for every year for three years. Um, so are there limitations with this master and working internationally? I've heard that some countries, Portugal, have very strict rules about training and working on protected sites. That's probably for you too. What's that one like? Okay. okay. Um, so the question from Hannah, um, are there limitations with this master's and working internationally? Um, we do work on different sites abroad. Uh, the fieldwork sites are usually the end product of, of a long period of discussion and liaison with the host countries and uh, authorities in the host countries. So um, we have built up a series of connections and relationships with uh, different international bodies and also at home as well, working with English Heritage at Longthorpe. And so we work within um, limitations um, set both nationally and internationally. And actually understanding those limitations is something that we teach students 
in the first year as well as part of principles and theory. And so those obviously those those the necessary permissions will, will be sought before any of the conservation projects can start, any of the field work can start. Which is why these projects are along, as Jane indicates, are there a long time, they take a long time to get set up, a long time to get going, to get running, because there are a lot of permissions that have to be sought, a lot of organization that has to be done. Mm. And this is something that we aim to give our students some insights to. Um, within the program so that you can have a sense of what it's like to, to work as a wall painting conservator. I think that's a question for Taka. Yes, uh, I discussed before. Um, Yes, um, I, I think I sent you the um, link um, for the um, our website. I'm happy to actually send it again. Um, but yes, um, we are planning to have the scheme available um, for the next year. Yes, yeah, so the answer is yes. Right. Um, shall we do? Do you want to wait for a couple more minutes, or do you think that's um? I'll give it thirty more seconds. <laughs> <In case someone laughs> has any last minute, yeah. last minute <laughs> thoughts. Um, and of course, if you do have any questions that uh suddenly occur to you now that we're you know once this once the webinar is finished you can of course email tucker at pg admissions oh, sorry i should give you <laughs> oh there we go right there's two more questions that just come up uh hannah asks oh sorry excuse me well somebody asks is there any career support after completing the degree um Throughout the degree, uh, we make an effort to put our students in contact with professionals working in the field, uh, both nationally and internationally, uh, through guest lecturers, going to visit people working on site. Um, and we do support students in application in, you know, where we can with field work or in the application, in job applications. Um, Yes. So yes, as as far as we can, we we like to see our students being successful uh, in their careers following the degree because we appreciate it is a big investment of time and money, um, and we want to see that that is um, you know that there's a, an a good career for the student afterwards. Um, is there Tucker? Is there something from SAS to answer about that? Yeah. So we've got um, we got a service uh, work career service um, run by somebody called Karen Detfield. Um, you um, you can access to that service uh, two years after uh, your graduation. Um, I've um, so I'm just going to paste uh, the link uh, for that. Yeah, on that. Um, yes, um, so you can actually access, you can talk to her um, about how it's going to pan, pan out. Um, if you want to receive a sort of general service, specific um, um, and all the tutors can actually provide, um, please have a look at the link um, for more information. Okay, so the question, how much contact time do students receive? Um, in terms of uh, the first year, there's a, a very intensive um, one semester and a half of uh, teaching um, with uh, various supervisors and, uh, and lecturers. Um, and then on fieldwork, students also receive very close supervision from a fieldwork supervisor as well. So um, there's, there's quite a significant amount of contact time. 
Um, I can't be more specific than that, but you could also look at information provided on the website as well. I mean, we're, we're looking at teaching about four days a week, mm. largely full time. Mm. Um, so that's teaching with a supervisor, with a lecturer in seminars, in the work room where we are here. Um, and then obviously on field work, you're with a supervisor all the time. So it, there is a lot of contact time. It's unlike any other master's program because it's the because of the practical component and because there's so much to learn about wall painting conservation. And then there's a question from uh, Kathleen asking, how likely is it that you can obtain a scholarship? Can that be obtained for each year? I think that's one for Tucker. Yeah. Um, so it is, it is, uh, well, I've got to say it is quite competitive. Um, we, we are very proud to uh, manage support like um half of enrolled students um last year um and then we try our best to um support them throughout the um three years of the course um but as i said before um court order scholarships are consistent of donations um so sometimes um might not be possible um but we try to support them for the duration of the course um, once um, you receive the um, scholarships, but it's not always the case. And um, Taka, could you say, could you comment on when the scholarship applications are open? Are all spring. And we we normally send notification emails to everybody who's eligible. Um, so it normally happens around um, sort of late April, that sort of time. It really depends um, when scholarships are ready, um, but we are sort of aiming to open them in spring. Um, and part of um, scholarship application, you need um, proof of your finance um, sort of background um, by submitting three months worth of your bank statements and plus um, scholarships form. Um, you need to submit those um, two things. Um, then we will actually assess your applications. Um, then we will actually let you know as soon as um, um, possible. Um, and in scholarships, a big um, outcome, uh, outcome be communicated before you have to accept our offers. So before you need to actually pay your deposit, um, you would definitely actually hear from us um, if you have a, a scholarships or not. So you can actually make informed decision before the deadline. Okay. Um, do you think this is the... Um, last question or yeah I think I think we'll 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 wrap up now yeah um, thank you again for for watching um and uh yeah do get in touch if you have any other questions that have occurred to you all right thank you thank you so much thank you Thanks. bye bye, -bye.